Can't you just use this recent photo? Mm. <clears throat> All right. Here you go. Woohoo! All right, these are these little balls. They call them the dragon balls. Get the pull out now. <gasps> Oh, seven Dragon Balls. In the craters that are on Comet 67P. They have the exact same things. Exact same identical. I'll show you. And and this is what the either the blood is pushing its way back out. It obviously is. It's not trying to collect going in. So you, it's feeding back through these tubes. And that's what these things do. They transpire gases back and forth into your blood that would be behind there. Linked below is the Blue Holes in Russia and Florida video that Mud Fossil University is presenting us here. He originally made the video in 2015, and surprise, surprise, he doesn't link this article that he's reading off from. I'm going to assume this picture that he's showing these dragon balls on is of a crater near Lake Bacall in Russia, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. We're so far off the trail here. We might as well just accept we're dying in the woods and get on with it. This is up in these Russian sinkholes. <laughs> it's you a don't see vessel. this vascularization. I'm not exactly sure. I can't define the process yet. I'm thinking about it. But I can guarantee you that you will find some characteristic... Did you hear that fucking noise? Oh my god, he loves poking his monitors so goddamn much. This, 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 I can guarantee, I can guarantee, I can guarantee. Look at the fucking waveform. You can see where he's poking his monitor on the fucking waveform of the clip. Oh my god. Every moment I live is agony. I was literally, I think, the first to do any DNA on ancient mud fossils. And I had it done, by this time I had already had it done, in 2015. And I had the CAT scans, and I had anatomists, and I had all that stuff done already, so I knew what I was talking about. So this was not a mystery to me. Linked below is the report that Mud Fossil University always goes over. It's sort of depressing that he never links the actual report, never gives the report out. You have to go searching for it. But being the good YouTuber that I am, I always cite my sources. Do these tests verify that mud fossils exist and ancient people the size of skyscrapers used to roam the planet and this random dude that loves poking his fucking monitor as a toenail from them? No, of course not. DNA on sediments and rocks is not a weird thing. You pick up a rock with your bare hand, some skin flakes off on it, bam, you have DNA on a rock. Scientists use this very method to study ancient hominids and other animals. That doesn't mean the rock itself is fucking human. It means that there's human DNA on the rock. Again, read the report that he goes on and on and on about. It's linked below. But I didn't realize how deeply you could go with the DNA. Now they're just doing it regularly with virtually anything. It, you know, they're taking the dust and everything else and getting DNA out of it. it could, because it's always been there, they just never looked at it until I started screaming. Mud Fossil University, savior of all science. So... And Velikovsky was talking about these things, and everybody's been talking about these things for years and years and years and years. And I don't know why they never get to the point, well, nobody's ever been able to prove with the DNA, and nobody's ever had the Sam specimens, and nobody's ever had the CAT scans. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I got all the stuff now. Let's just get it done. Sorry to uh, burst your bubble there, Mud Falls University, but you ain't got shit. And they still ain't got shit. Still ain't got shit. You know, the vascular system, um, you know, there's going to be chemicals in there that we can test. Uh, you know, and at least look at. Maybe it won't show anything, but if you don't look, you, you don't understand. But nobody understands this is from life. Think about it on this process. And I'm going to tell you something right now. 
I believe that the holes up in Russia are from a lung. That is literally the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Let me handle this. That idea is just the worst. I, I believe that, and I have CAT scans of lungs that are in that same level of vascularization and, and, and porosity, and I, you know, virtually identical, but they're they're you know certainly obviously small. Here are CAT scan images of lungs. Here is the rock that Mud Fossil University claims to be virtually identical. Look at them both. You tell me. Can you tell the difference? Yes, we can. All right, first of all, look at this. This is the typical pattern of a membrane. All right, so I showed you the typical pattern of a membrane. That's a, that is the membrane. Now, what does the membrane consist of? It consists of one of these layers here. All right, because that's one of the layers. Did you catch that in-depth explanation? No? Okay, I'll play it again for you so you can grasp the full extent of the amazing new science that's going on here. Alright. Do you need to see it again? Are you convinced yet? Alright, let's do it. One more time. Educate us, Professor. Alright. called the, um, you know, it's a membrane outer layer. And then in between that and another layer just like this is this bilipid fatty cholesterol and uh, lipids, um, fats. Are you serious? The fuck kind of explanation was that? I honestly missed the finger poking at this point. At least I could kind of follow what you were doing. But saying fats five times in a row doesn't convey a lot of information to me. It's almost like you don't have a theory here. You're just pulling stuff out of your ass again. Up above here is some kind of tissue. And then there is the up, upper layer of the membrane. Then there's the aqueous, wet, gooey part that I told you erodes away. And then there's the lower part of the membrane. So what we're looking at here is the bottom part from that diagram that you were so lovingly touching earlier. And then the upper part apparently is gone. And the aqueous part in the center has been eroded away. Okay. One quick question. The fuck is this over here? That looks like the aqueous part that hasn't been eroded away yet. Explain? So that's the thickness of the membrane in this creature. And these are the holes that are, and I'll, let me just play it, because underneath here, wherever there's flesh, and it can stretch and pull and go anywhere, there's what they call intersection balls. This is my first royalty check from my summer dance jam, Balls. Just, um, Gil Hadley and I discovered them, literally. Back in 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, the medical society says, ooh, we discovered a brand new organ. It's called interstitian. Mud Fossil University, savior of all science. And the, I'll show you these balls in a second. They're everywhere. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Honey, he's got such a large sight. He could come up above this and see this and see where it transitions from. Because that's the key. That's the key. Where does this transition into? That's when you know what it's from. Otherwise, it's just a big bunch of tendon or a big bunch of membranes or a big bunch of muscle. Then you just, you know, and then it's just a curiosity. I'll give you Mud Fossil Guy some help. Link below is a site that gives you geologic maps of any area you want, specifically New Zealand. You want to see what the structure, how big it gets? Go to that website, get yourself a picture of the geology, like I have right here. It's just that easy. Now, I relate all my stuff because my stuff is small, I don't have to, you know, he walked 20 miles, 30 miles, I'm serious. He could go 20, 30 miles before he got to the other side of his lung, or more. I'm afraid we need to use math. 
The average adult lung is about 27 centimeters tall at full capacity. On a six foot tall person, that's about 15% of their total height. If this lung is 30 miles long, that means the person that has this 30 mile lung inside of them is 200 miles tall. For reference point, Mount Everest is five and a half miles tall. Are you beginning to see why this mud fossil creature hypothesis is beyond ridiculous 200 mile tall person? That's fucking nuts. Is in my opinion, and my opinion is based on an extreme amount of research and experimenting and testing and microscopy, which I'll show you in a second. I can't see anything that isn't biological. It's biology, bitch. No, but all I can tell you is if we don't start thinking along these lines, we're walking around in circles. My bad. I didn't realize it was not crazy to believe in 200 mile tall people. I guess that one's on me. More importantly, most important of all, Sorry. You've got to learn from Mudfoss University spends the rest of the video talking about his interstitium balls and how much he loves these balls and how he's the first person ever to discover balls and he's the best thing that's ever happened in the scientific community because of all these balls that are everywhere and it's all, it's all bullshit. I don't think I need to explain that much more. How many videos have I done on him? He always says the exact same stuff yet somehow it's entertaining to find South Park clips pointing out the stupidity of it all check down links below if you don't know about interstitium learn up from actual scientists from actual doctors from actual professionals so to summarize this video series what have i thought about this one i really do not enjoy watching mudfast university watch mudfast university you gotta find a better format dude that was boring as fuck two where was the geology exactly? He didn't talk about geology. Three, how is this still a thing? How do people believe this? Do you never, does no one take the extra two seconds to think, okay, if a lung is 30 miles long, this person is taller than the atmosphere. That poses a bit of an issue, doesn't it? 